Hey guys, my name is Zach. Today we're working on a 1-6 scale bag end door for the joy of hopping. And to start with, we need some paint. We have meadow green, brown, metallic gold, and matte clear by Rust-Oleum. We're also using uh, 1 8 inch thick by 3 quarter inch wide by 36 inch long balsa wood sticks. We need about three and a half of these, so obviously you need four. Uh, we also are using a 10 inch wooden sewing circle. Uh, these worked out really nicely for this project, and uh, they're way cheaper than uh, other alternatives. For paint, we have Vallejo White, two different blue glow-in-the-dark paints, Khaki by Folk Art, Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel. Uh, we're also using wood and super glue, some metal beads, and some paper craft um, little attachment things. Uh, the scale of bag ends kind of weird. If you look at Gandalf standing next to the door, um, being that we know how tall the Gandalf 1-6 scale figure is, Bag end would be about eight and a half inches tall. Um, and I was real happy with that scale until I actually bought the clock and uh, sat next to my Gandalf figure and it was way too small. Um, I did actually make this um, into a bag end with the clock, but it just didn't look right. But if you look here, Bilbo should be about a head shorter than the top of the door. Um, however, in The Hobbit, he's as tall as the door, and if you know the figure is 8 inches tall, then the door should be 8 inches tall, um, and it just kind of gets more confusing because Frodo almost seems taller than the door in some scenes, which doesn't make a lot of sense, and in other scenes, he's much smaller. So, um, Asmus actually is working on their own 1-6 environment. I'm not sure if this is going to be available for purchase, uh, but it looks like they also have the door a little bit too small. Uh, the first thing we're going to do going back to the build is cut the wood into 11-inch strips. You can see there our little hoop is 10 inches, so 11 inches will work just fine. I guess if you're good at math, you could probably make some of the strips much shorter, but I was too lazy to do that. And we're going to cut out a bunch of strips and lay down our sewing hoop. We're going to tape everything together, trace them out, number them 1 through 14. Uh, and so we kind of uh, keep the orientation up and down and left to right. And as we cut them out, we're going to start gluing them and just tacking them together with the super glue. Once everything's done, you can see it looks nice and neat. We'll toss some wood glue on the back and also add some bracing to it. We're then going to paint our hoop with this uh, brown color here, um, which ended up really not being that necessary, and also base coating our door. Uh, once we sand the first layer down and get rid of any imperfections in the balsa wood, we're then going to go in with these adhesive dots with a drop of super glue and glue them on roughly uh, matching the pattern from the movie, making sure to leave some space for the doorknob and the rune. And uh, with them with more green paint. Now I did go over the hoop with this khaki uh, just to brighten it up a bit. The brown ended up being a little too dark. Uh, and so we'll do that. And once everything is glued with the dots and repainted and then gluing the hoop to the door, uh, this is what we got. We're going to go in with a burnt umber wash and basically mix this about one part paint to maybe five parts water, uh, up to as high as ten parts water. And we're going to use a sponge brush to just kind of work this into um, the wood grain itself. Also, the um, it's kind of like fill in the different panels where the wood isn't exactly flush with itself. And then also the hoop. The point of this is to add some aging to the door. I know in um, the Hobbit movie, Bilbo does mention the door is freshly painted. Uh, but this will kind of just age it just a bit, just to make it look a little bit more uh, realistic. Uh, because even in the movie, being freshly painted, it wasn't exactly like a pristine green color. Once the paint dries for a bit, we're going to start kind of tapping it with a paper towel. And this is going to give us a little bit of texture there, which you can see. I ended up doing three coats of wash and removing it after each coat. We're then going to glue a little bit of uh, a few of the beads together to make our doorknob, uh, paint them gold, and then glue that to the center of our door. And you can see it does look a little glossy right now. Um, the paint that we used was a gloss green. Uh, we're going to matte that out with the matte spray from earlier. And the next comes the rune. I didn't film it because it was kind of a pain in the butt, but we use Vallejo White. And then these two blues, dark blue first and light blue. And um, I don't love it, to be honest. If I did this again, I would probably use like a glow-in-the-dark marker. Uh, but you can see here the glow is actually really nice. And that's pretty much it. Once you kind of attach it to some sort of base to keep it standing, uh, you can see it looks really, really good there. And in the cabinet, it looks even better. Um, the rune is really nice. It does take a lot of light to get it to glow. Uh, but honestly, I think the scale of this works really well. And I think it's an easy project that you should try on your own. And uh, if you do, please let me know.
And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching The Joy of Hobbing. If you have any questions, drop them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Have a great day and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like it.